Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about Alternative Measures for GDP. In this video we're going to examine the different ways of measuring economic activity in a country and to do this we'll look at the Irish case in 2017 and various measures of output. The first measure we'll look at is GDP, a gross domestic product at current market prices. This is the total value added or output in the production of goods and services in a country, a figure we've looked at before. And what we are going to do to this is start to adjust it. The first adjustment that we will see here is for something called net factor income. And in the Irish case, this is a negative figure as seen, and it's quite substantial, minus 60 billion. So this is the difference between investment income, so this would be interest rates and profits, and labour income earned abroad by Irish residents, people, and companies. So we call this the inflows when money is coming back in from abroad. So it's the difference between that and incomes earned by our, our sorry, non-Irish residents. So this would be outflows, so non-Irish residents who are spend, sending back money. This gives us a figure of gross national product, which is 233 billion in Ireland. So we can see the difference then between these figures. Now I just want to focus in a small bit more in 2018 in Ireland to see where this money is actually going, this net factor income. So net factor income, it's heavily influenced by activities of foreign owned multinational corporations in Ireland. So what we see is companies set up in Ireland tend to send some of their profits back home. And we call this the repatriation of profits. So what happens here is it, that figure of net factor income is substantially negative in Ireland. And what we have to do is account for this. So if we have 312 billion in terms of GDP in Ireland in 2018, we have to take away this 66 billion, this net factor income, to get a GNP, 246 billion in our case. Now, that gives us a new formula. So it says that GNP is GDP minus net factor income, a minus in our case because it's taken away. If it was plus in a country, you'd add it on. And this is both the income inflows and outflows from a country. It's made up of a number of things in Ireland. The first one is direct investment income. So this is the return which direct investors receive under investment in affiliates in other countries, such as Ireland. So direct investors are able to exercise control over the enterprise they invest in and they get equity return or debt interest return. You've got your portfolio investment, which is a return on cross-border investments from investors who do not own a controlling stake in the entity. You also have other investment income, and this is composed of earnings on financial derivatives, interest arising from deposits and loans, etc. So interest on savings, you also have compensation of employees, so that's wage and non-wage remuneration of non-residents working in Ireland and Irish employees working in non-resident affiliations, quite small in the Irish case. Now the overriding factor here though for Ireland is that it's based on foreign owned multinational corporations and a repatriation of profits. So in Ireland we have quite a bit of FDI, foreign direct investment. We have companies that have headquarters here, maybe European, or maybe they've inverted their companies to set up their headquarters here and therefore pay the majority of their taxes in Ireland at a low corporation tax. And because of this, when they send back their profits back home, we have a large negative figure in that case. We now move on to looking at gross national product and changing it by EU subsidies and EU taxes. So we see here we add on the subsidies, we take away the tax amount, and what that yields is a gross national income figure at current market prices. So we get a slightly more accurate figure again based on the income levels left in a country, adding in these subsidies from the EU and taxes taking away. Now, we also have to, if we want to get a more accurate figure, provide for the provision of depreciation. 
In Ireland, this is minus 71, almost 72 billion. And this is the erosion of assets in Ireland, the value of assets. So we'll be talking about here the value of, for example, buildings, transport, machinery, R&D even. And we see that the figure is massively negative. This yields a net national product at factor cost of 139 billion quite a bit different than the GDP figure at the top. So depreciation is very large in Ireland due to the amount of produced assets. We can also look at GDP per capita. This is divided by the population level, where we get figures such as 61,000 output per person in Ireland, 48,000 for GNP, quite a bit of a difference, and again, 48,000 for GNI per person. Now, if we go back to gross national income at current market prices, in Ireland we have had to take into account in recent years of globalisation the fact that businesses are becoming more complex and that countries and especially uh, companies in Ireland transact with the rest of the world. So national economy and employment and local and private investment is no longer local and private. So we have to make adjustments and we've made three adjustments here in the Irish case. We've taken into account redomiciled companies, depreciation on R&D and imports and trade in intellectual property and depreciation on aircraft leasing. So this gives us a figure of modified gross national income, and this is 181 billion in Ireland. This idea came out of a tweet from a Nobel Prize winning economist a few years ago, Paul Krugman, who tweeted that the, our figure of 26% GDP growth rate in 2015 was ludicrous. It was tantamount to leprechaun economics, where the Irish economy was growing at a farcical rate. And in this case, something must be wrong because modern economies do not grow at 26% growth rate. They don't uh, double every four years in overall size. So we had to make adjustments uh, as above based on the three different figures. And the first one that we have here is based on re com uh, companies. So what we mean here is inverted companies. A US company might set up a headquarter company in Ireland and its headquarters back in the US becomes a subsidiary. What this means in that case is that the money that comes from profits is brought back to the Irish company for lower tax purposes. So that increases the GDP here. We also have depreciation on R&D and trade in intellectual property. So what we have here is an awful lot of what happened in Ireland was due to what's called contract manufacturing. And this is when a company in Ireland engages a company abroad to manufacture on its behalf. The products can be new products or products formally produced, but the inputs used in the production process remain in the ownership of the Irish company. So what that means is the foreign contract manufacturer supplies the service, but never takes ownership. So in the Irish case, we have far larger uh, GDP and output figures, even though the output, the manufacturing isn't produced here. And another massive figure uh, included in this depreciation in R&D is the fact that big companies, multinationals have brought intellectual property here. And what that means is the intellectual property is paid a revenue from companies, their subsidiaries that use it outside of Ireland. So revenue again flows back in in the Irish case and we have to depreciate based on that. Finally, we have the depreciation of aircraft leasing and this figure here is based on Ireland being an important hub for multinational firms engaged in aircraft leasing. So uh, the balance of payments in Ireland show that operational leasing uh, has recorded a threefold increase. So the Irish resident firms, they now own the aircraft as a result of these leasings. The assets are included in the Irish capital stock, which again inflates our capital and therefore inc inflates our GDP figure. So for these three reasons, we have had to produce a modified GNI figure and this figure, as shown, is 181 billion, far lower than our claimed GDP figure. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.